Hey everybody, welcome back to Seymour Stories. This week I sat down with Kyle Karam, the choir director at Seymour High School. We learned a little bit about the rich history of the Seymour Choir, and we talked about how you can support the choir this week, Thursday, May 16th at Brooklyn Pizza. Check it out. Hey everybody, this is Josh Robinson here with another episode of Seymour Stories. Today we're with the choir director at Seymour High School, Kyle Karam. Hey everybody, thanks for having me, Josh. Hey Kyle, can you start by telling us a, a little bit about yourself? Sure, uh, actually I grew up in Muskegon, Michigan, uh, which is on the kind of the west side of, of the state. Um, went uh, and graduated high school there at a really phenomenal choral, choral program, was blessed to be, be there and then uh, graduated, went on to college, uh, attended Western Michigan University for my undergraduate degree in music education. And then uh, after that graduated, um, with that degree, like I said, and then moved to Angola, Indiana, which is the northeast corner of this state. And I taught at a little school for two and a half years and I taught fifth through 12th grade. So I was able to kind of touch a lot of, uh, be involved with a lot of different uh, age groups and, and skill sets and things like that. And then eventually my wife got a job at Indiana University and uh, we moved down here. We actually moved to Bloomington for three years and then we moved uh, to Seymour after that. So she still works at Indiana University and, and, and of course I'm, I'm still here, so. All right, yeah. great. Okay, can, can you tell us a little bit about the history of the choir program at Seymour High School? Yeah, uh, the, the choir program has been established as long as the school has been established. So once, ever since there was a Seymour High School, there has been a Seymour High School choirs. Uh, the first director, or one of the first directors was Earl Prout, who is the, uh, the namesake of this auditorium. He was here for 30 years, 1961 to 1991. And then, um, there have been some directors after that. We had uh, another director, David Lamb, who was here for 14 years. Mr. Stam, Keith Stam was here for about uh, six or seven years. And then after that was a, f a few um, before me in a kind of a short period of time. But so okay. we've, we've been going strong ever since 1961. Okay. So has there been any notable people that people would recognize that's been through the, the Seymour High School Choir program? Yeah, a few a few come to mind. Number one uh, would be John Mellencamp. I know he was a member of the choirs here. Uh, Katie okay. Stam was also a member of the choirs who, uh, I still hear stories about how great she was. Uh, and then uh, Gina Morrissey, who was also, who went overseas and did some of the uh, Got Talent series and things like that, did quite well from, from what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing, so. So the history of the Seymour Choir sounds pretty interesting. Can you tell us uh, what's going on in the choir today? So yeah, this is my fourth year in the choir program. Uh, when I started here, we had about 150 students and we've grown over the, uh, the past few years. We're at about 280 students now. And uh, so we have six different choir classes and some extracurricular choirs as well. Uh, and that of course, with more students, we have a higher demand for things. We, we need more things, more equipment, more music, more dresses, things of that nature. So, uh, but things are going well, uh, we compete at a state qualifiers event uh, every year with two of the choirs. They did very well this year. I'm very proud of them. They both rated gold. Uh, and then we also have choirs that go to different festivals and things like that. So yeah, we're, we're rocking and rolling here. So does the Seymour Choir kind of have like a, a mission statement of sorts? Not exactly a mission statement, but we do kind of follow a lot of what the school has been doing, which is, or the school district has been doing, which is sort to excellence. You know, okay. every year we try to raise the bar uh, on ourselves and we try to do better at competitions and do better at choral festivals and, and have a better musical every year and these sort of things, just so that way we're raising the bar every year so every year gets better, uh, and which comes with its own challenges, but, uh, and, and make, helps us work harder, but more importantly, helps us work smarter. So with 280 kids participating in the choir program, uh, which is awesome, uh, that has to come with a lot of expenses. Uh, how do you handle that challenge? You know, it definitely is a challenge. And we, we have a lot of sort of expenses. Um, we ranging from sheet music. Every time we do a song, we have to buy a sheet of music per kid. We have dresses that we purchase, get hemmed, get um, uh, sewn up, get dry cleaned, those sort of things. And then, um, you know, suits for the guys. We have musical rights. You know, it's not free to do a musical. You have to pay the owner of of that uh, to be able to do that. There's a lot of things throughout the year as well that come up that um, that just really start adding up. So, so, what does it cost for a student here to participate in choir? So, um, the fee for choir is exactly zero dollars and zero cents. Awesome. Yeah, it's sort of uh, like I said, my personal philosophy. Um, that every kid, no matter where they come from, no matter their socioeconomic status, they have a home here. They have a place here where they can be involved. Well, that's cool. They don't have to pay. Is that common amongst other schools in, that you're aware of? You know, it's it's 
It's hit or miss, uh, but most schools do charge. Uh, sometimes it's as low as $20, $30 for the year just to kind of cover those print music expenses, but it can also range $150, $200. There are schools um, within the state anyway that charge over $1,000 to be in choir, and that includes retreat costs and, and full full um, rights and all their costuming and things like that. And we just, we try to not burden our students and our parents with that sort of thing. So if the, if the kids aren't paying, then how do you pay for choir? So we do, we do a handful of fundraisers throughout the year. Uh, we do, first of all, we start with our Butter Braids fundraiser, which is a pretty popular one around this town, but we, we definitely do a huge sale every year. A butter braid is a frozen pastry that you take at home, you let it thaw, and then you bake it for a little bit, and it raises up, it expands out, and it's a, it's a delicious dessert for, um, especially for Thanksgiving, Christmas, those sort of things. And then we do a mattress fundraiser uh, every year, which is the Sunday of President's Day. And we have a, a company that comes in, they set up a display just like a normal, just like a, a mattress store. And people come in and they check them out and they can buy them then. And then they're delivered within about a week and a half okay. of, of the order, so. And then the last big fundraiser we do every year is called our Slices and Songs. Well, can you tell us some more about that event? Sure. The event, uh, like I said, is called Slices and Songs, and it's at uh, Brooklyn Pizza and Harmony Park. So it Slices, it, of course, is pizza and songs is music. So we are going to have the stage to ourselves that night, and we have a bunch of students who are coming up. They've prepared specialty acts in advance, so they, they're doing acoustic acts, uh, acapella acts. Uh, we've got a barbershop group in there. Oh. We've got a lot of the music is top 40 or some of the, you know, their favorite music. Um, it, it's a range of musical selections and each student does one, two, maybe three songs and we kind of keep the night moving, but it's a blast. The kids love it and it's, it's a good fundraiser. So it sounds like they're getting to do the kind of music that they want to do. Is that always the case or? Uh, in this particular event, yes, absolutely. Now, before that, we have a bunch of choir concerts where all the music is, is selected by me. And it's a lot of more of the choral music, um, stand on the risers, make beautiful sounds. Uh, but this is definitely a moment where they get to shine and sing the things that they want to sing. Um, everything's auditioned, of course, so I, we can make sure that it's A, school appropriate, and B, is up to the quality. You know, we have our, our soaring for excellent standard here, and we want to make sure those two things are definitely met. But other than that, they get to pick whatever whatever songs they want. You're good. So where again is the Slices and Songs event gonna be? Uh, it's, a, it's at Brooklyn Pizza and Harmony Park, which is on 2nd Street uh, okay. here in Seymour. Uh, it is, the event is gonna be Thursday, May 16th okay. from, well, it's four to nine will be the entire event and that's the pizza sales and the performances will be from six to eight. Okay. So at, at any time between four and nine, if you're coming to support the choirs, just make sure you mention the choirs so that way we get the, the credit for that and a portion of those pizza sales will come back to us and then a minimum two dollar donation to get into the door uh to, into harmony park to hear the performances we'd love to see you come out and support the choir and enjoy some pizza and music in the meantime here's a little preview from two of our singers millie and hannah carry on my way Hi, I'm Hannah. Join us May 16th at Brooklyn Pizza in Harmony Park to see us and many other musicians and to support the Seymour Choir program. See you there.